Okay guys, we're doing a little impromptu video here because right before I was hitting the bed, I saw this article pop up. Nikon acquires red digital cinema, 100%. 100% swallows it up just like Moby Dick. You know, this is this is crazy to me. Okay, first of all, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's let's look at the article real quick. And by the way, posted by Nikon.com. Now, before I saw this, I saw this Instagram post posted by Jared Land, and all he wrote as the caption was he he he. <laughs> so he's like Homer Simpson, just silently scurrying back into the bushes. Nikon to acquire U.S. cinema camera manufacturer Red.com. LLC hereby announces its entry into an agreement to acquire 100% of the outstanding membership interests of red.com LLC red whereby red will become a wholly owned subsidiary of Nikon pursuant to a membership interest purchase agreement with Mr. James Gennard its founder and Mr. Jared Land its current president okay this is so fucking wild to me dude let's just back up here a little bit uh 2020 our beloved year of 2020, when Red first announced the Komodo. Now, as I recall, the Komodo was one of the very first cameras to have the then brand new Canon RF mount. You remember that? And then it, it was a little odd that the Komodo's native battery source was these old ass Canon batteries from the old Canon EOS cinema line, right? Like these BP955s. Canon didn't even make them anymore. They were like impossible to find. Remember that? Like everybody was buying those shitty old Canon batteries off of eBay. You know, it was like, wait, wait, what's going on here? And then, and then the next three, was it two? At least the next two cameras after also had the Canon RF mount as its native mount on the newer red cameras of the DSMC3 bodies. So I guess the little deal with Canon didn't work out, huh, Red? <laughs> so now, now Nikon's swooping in to save the day. This is really bizarre to me because Nikon seems like the redheaded stepchild of the photography world, let alone they have been completely absent in the cinematography world for, I don't know, how many fucking decades now? <laughs> like, yeah, sure, sure. People use the old ass Nikon AIS lenses. Shout out to poor things. They used some of the Nikon AIS vintage, but we're talking about lenses from the goddamn 70s, right? Like, what, like, what has Nikon done for the filmmaking community in the last 40 years? I don't know. Please, inform me in the comments, uh, because anytime I see an ad for Nikon, it's for wedding photographers or old white dudes shooting portraits that look like they were made in the 80s or literally shooting wildlife. Wildlife. Now that makes sense because if you follow Jared on Instagram, you know he loves taking uh, photographs and hidden videos of wildlife up there in Big Sur. So, okay, I guess it all checks out, right? <laughs> this is so fucking bizarre to me. Uh, shout out to Scott Bolcom because he was one of the guys that posted the article. I'm friends with Scott on Facebook. I hope he doesn't mind me telling the world that. I commented on it. I said, Nikon though? Shaking my head. Uh, who's saving who here, right? Because it, it seems like two dying dodo birds trying to save each other. Scott's uh, response was so uh, politically correct, and that's what I really love about Scott. You know, uh, and I want to point out it was completely accurate, and I 100% agree with it. I'd say both: tech flowing up, revitalizing Nikon, and development money coming down. I just wanted to say, good answer. Good answer. I think he's exactly correct on that. However, I think this is, I, I think we all <laughs> should step back and realize the reality of something that we have all not really been wanting to acknowledge for a while now is like Sony has crawled their way to the top and, and, and dominated in ways that a lot of us uh, have either been in denial about like, you know, a mom whose kid is a hardcore drug addict. I mean, that level of denial, right? Because it's like, okay, clearly Sony uh, have risen to the top here. You know, my biggest concern when I kind of got rubbed raw with Red in the way that I kind of have my own feelings about that company was the day they dropped the Komodo X, okay? Now, granted, I had already owned the original Komodo years prior to that. But still, I just looked at that and I thought they completely cannibalized the, the, the camera that just came out two years ago. You know, they basically said, okay, let's fix the SDI problem that they probably lost a lot of money on uh, or not, because I don't think they actually covered the SDI issue in any warranty. So I think maybe they were trying to 
uh, recoup a little bit on that. But they, uh, obviously, uh, I guess in the Komodo X, that they solved the two major issues that I saw with the original Komodo, right? They, they fixed the SDI problem and they now finally had a real integrated uh, battery <laughs> and not going with some old ass fucking shitty Canon batteries. But maybe their new RED camera will have some old shitty Nikon batteries we don't know about. <laughs> uh, that would be funny though. You know, that kind of was like a red flag to me. Like they, they literally cannibalized a camera that didn't come out that long ago. You know, when you look at Sony, at least when Sony, I mean, we know, we all know, Sony drops a new camera every fucking six months, but at least when they do it, they still give you options to be like, well, maybe I still want to keep this other one, right? They, they just don't completely cannibalize their other cameras unless it's like literally the next generation of, and we all know, like, like when did the A7S III come out? And when did the A7S IV come out? Oh, that's right, the A7S IV still hasn't come out, right? That's my whole point. Like, the, if they're gonna totally replace a camera, they wait long enough to where it makes sense to do so. I mean, I was just talking to a guy today that came by to buy some grip gear from me, and you know, he was telling me how him and his buddy are selling off their Komodos to buy the Sony Burano. Now, that is a big, you know, like, Sony Burano is not exactly a prosumer camera, okay? They're selling off their RED cameras, multiple RED cameras, to buy the $25,000 Sony Burano system. Now, that tells you a lot. And his uh, response to me was that he's tired of dealing with the proprietariness of RED. I kind of argue about that. I say, well, you know, RED has kind of gotten away from all the proprietary media and all of that to some degree. But we all know that they have Global Dynamics United in their, in their pocket, you know, and, and that's kind of proprietary AKS only for their cameras. I, that's okay, I guess. I do understand where they're coming from because because I look at RED like that too. Like I really see them as like the Apple of the camera world. And the difference is these cameras cost a lot more than your new fucking iPhone, right? Let's be real about it. Uh, so this is interesting now that Nikon is uh, devoured them 100%, right? <laughs> it reminds me of like when Sony bought Minolta 100%. <laughs> and, and this is interesting. Even though when Sony ate up Minolta, Minolta was literally uh, on a decline. Minolta was literally in bankruptcy and, and Sony literally adopted everything. That's where they got the Alpha insignia from, everything. But the difference is, is that Sony was, wasn't hurting, right? So this signals to me like Red maybe aren't hurting, but there's a part of me that feels like they are. <laughs> and I think why they would be hurting is because why else the fuck would you allow a company like Nikon to devour you 100% of, of everything? <laughs> Which is insane to me because Nikon doesn't have a footprint at all in, in the filmmaking community. It's really fucking bizarre. And that's the thing where I think Sony, I think is is like, you know, somewhere in the war room of cameras, if this was Dr. Strangelove of the camera world, I feel like all the other camera companies are like off in their own little little corners, just kind of like chuckling away, really enjoying this. I imagine Aerie are somewhere popping champagne bottles right now, and Sony's just chuckling to themselves, almost in the same fashion that Jared might have been chuckling to himself. Because this is an interesting thing, and I don't think any other camera company on the market is sweating in their boots right now, because it, it's just so fucking random and, and off and bizarre. Again, I, I really think Nikon are like the redheaded stepchildren of the photography world. You can hate me for saying that, but I call it how I see it, man. The only time I ever hear anyone talk about Nikon is that crazy camera guy on YouTube, you know, the kind of heavy set guy that wears the glasses and he's bald. I love that guy, but he's the only guy I ever see raving about Nikon, maybe Tony Northrup, and then uh, in the PPA magazine, they push their fucking lenses. Uh, other than that, like old white guys. Like who the fuck else do you know talking about Nikon? Maybe Camera Conspiracy talks about it every now and then, but again, he does a lot of wildlife. He does a lot of wildlife, so uh, I rest my case. <laughs> this is gonna be really fucking interesting to see how this moves forward. I hope that a year from now, I look back on this video and I go, oh, Justin, you're way off, dude. And I really hope that I am. I hope that Nikon and Red really surprise all of us and uh, just really come out with some big banger at, at next year's NAB, but I, I'm not gonna have my fingers crossed, I'll tell you that much. Maybe Nikon will go a different route with the name calling system, and, and rather than having, you know, all their cameras based after reptiles and dinosaurs, now Nikon will start naming the cameras off of uh, wizards. <laughs> New wizard line coming soon from Nikon and Red Digital Cinema. Yeah, interesting. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Sony? Hats off to you, baby. You are slowly devouring everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They're smaller, lighter, and less expensive. First up is the Nikon Z30. 
This is their entry-level camera, but it is a great place to start, a great place to get into the Nikon system. 